Mac Voices is sponsored by lynda.com. Expand your skills, improve yourself. Get a free 10-day trial of all lynda.com has to offer at lynda.com slash macvoices. And by TunnelBear, the really simple app to privately browse and get around block websites. To find out more and download your own TunnelBear, visit tunnelbear.com slash macvoices. Welcome back to Mac Voices. This is the Talk of the Mac Community. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, for this for the second time in, in a very short period of time, we have the opportunity to talk to Mr. Jeff Carlson. This time, he's got another new book. It's not a take control book, but it's a book that I think you'll be interested in. And I got to cheat and make sure I get it right. It's mm-hmm. photos for OS X and iOS, something that we can all relate to, I think. Jeff, great to have you back. Thanks for being here so quickly again. Wow. Oh, thanks for inviting me again. Yeah, this well, this is great. I've, I was really excited to see this book because we've we've talked about one photos book um, that is out for OS for excuse me for OS ten and iOS, but mm-hmm. this this you know it's always good to get different perspectives on it. And of course, you really are a, a, a photography guy. You mm-hmm. you very much, and so I'm really anxious to get your take. On on photos, both for the for the Mac and for iOS, who's it for? Who isn't it for? You know, what kind of expectations should we have going into it? Because frankly, everybody has it. It's free. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it, it's crazy. It's it's one of those things where um, it's it's another one of those those applications where uh, there are some people I've found who are just like, oh, I, I can't believe they got rid of iPhoto and they have this new thing and it's different and I hate it, uh, you know. Um, and then you realize that, you know, in a year, those people are like, oh, yeah, I love it. It's great. Um, <laughs> you know, um, and, and, you know, and there are some people who are, are you know, to be thrilled that, that, you know, iPhoto is finally no more, you know. I, I, I mean, count me in that camp because I, I loved iPhoto, and it just got progressively worse and worse and slow, and uh, you know, it it got to the point where it was a chore to launch iPhoto, and now uh, launching photos. I mean, just the the, the speed alone um, makes me happy. Um, it's it's not a perfect program yet. Um, I, I feel genuine pain for people who um, were, were invested in Aperture um, because uh, Photos really is not a replacement for Aperture, even though Aperture has also gone away and Apple sort of says that Photos is, is a replacement for Aperture. It can open your Aperture libraries, but there are issues. Um, you know, it's, but one of the things that I, that I, uh, Stro for when when doing the book when when Apple first um, you know announced photos and and announced that that iPhoto and Aperture were going away, um, I talked to my editor at Peach Pit Press and he's like you know we we want to do a book on on this new app um, and we'd like you to do it and as we were talking it was like well okay we can do a book on this app that that's fine but you know it's it, it's no longer just photos for for OS 10 it's um, it, it it's the photo ecosystem and I know the ecosystem kind of tends to be used um, overused but you know in, in this case what's interesting to give like a real brief history lesson um, what's interesting is that uh, photos for OS 10 if you've been using an iOS device for the last couple of years you've basically been using photos for OS 10 because they use that as as the template for the way Apple Photo apps should be moving forward, and just uh, you know, I don't have any inside knowledge about the engineering challenges or whatever, but um, it, it worked out such that that the the version on the iPhone and the iPad was out, you know, um, I think two full years before uh, the version for OS X came out, but. Once you know how to do one, you know how to do both. And then when you know how to do both, you get to take advantage of, of things like iCloud Photo Library, where you know uh, your, your, your photos that were all on your Mac can now all be on your phone. Uh, you know, and, and so you have interesting sharing possibilities. And um, it's, it's actually quite 
fascinating to me to be able to, even though I've you know been been using this since it was in beta, um, really being able to take a picture somewhere and not even have to think about oh geez now I have to import this into my my uh, you know my Mac, it just shows up there, and that's really cool you know and you know there are are lots of trade-offs and there are some things that that really stand out with photos there are some things that need more work but you know in in my view it's it's overall a much better program than iPhoto was and I think it's it's much better in terms of dealing with how we use photos now how how most people use photos from mobile devices and and the like Interesting that you would say that that iPhoto got so much worse. Did it get worse, Jeff, or did our expectations just increase? <laughs> That's um, a really good question. Um, I think uh, I think our expectations increased a little bit. Um, I think it genuinely did get worse <laughs> because okay, um, <laughs> uh, I, I, there were things about it. Um, it. it it was slow, um, and I, I would swear that it got more slow the older it got. Um, I think some of the editing controls were, um, you know, the, the 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 sort of easy editing modes were a little bit too ham-fisted, you know, like, like I want to apply a vignette. Well, here's, you know, just giant blocky vignette, and you can make it darker so you only see this much of the, of the image. You know, it's like, well, like, like there were things about it that you just you didn't want to use, and therefore you you ignored. So you know, I think. Um, oh, the, another thing that that iPhoto did does since it's still uh, running. Um, you know, it would always search for faces, always scanning face. Like you know, just launching iPhone. Or, I'm sorry, launching iPhoto would slow my computer down because it was looking for faces and you could not turn it off. Um, that and and then the other thing that that drove me crazy. I'll just here's my laundry list of things I hated about iPhoto. Um, <laughs> how not uh, to how not to use iPhoto. Well, uh, it, actually, the, this last thing also uh, ties in, into your other your other comment about it. Um, you know, we iPhoto basically the idea was okay. We're going to put all your photos in one place. It's going to be inside the app, um, inside a a package file, um, so that you don't have to worry about any of it. We're going to take care of everything. And that works for a time, but then, of course, all of our photo libraries got larger. And at the same time as our photo libraries um, getting larger, uh, hard disks also got larger. But we switched to um, SSD solid state drives, and those all got smaller. So where before you'd be like, oh, like I got a terabyte on my on my hard drive. I don't need to worry about you know storage at all. Well, and then you buy a new MacBook Pro. And you're like, hey, I've got a quarter of that, and where am I going to store everything? And so what we would do is we would you know uh, store photos on an external drive that we plug in. iPhoto to its last dying day, and I know it's not dead yet, but it's it, you know it still runs, but they're not updating it does not know what to do with photos that are on another drive. If you have an external hard drive and you have photos stored on it and you have those um, uh, linked as, as uh, reference files, um, which is just a, a, a setting so you don't have to copy everything into the main library, and you disconnect that drive, what every other sensible photo program will do is say, um, you know, Here's a preview. The original's not available, so you can't edit it, but here's what it looks like. You're like, oh, okay, right, it's on that drive. iPhoto would just put up this giant, like, construction warning uh, exclamation point triangle sign that said, file is not available. And you couldn't do anything about it. Like, like you couldn't even see if that happened to be the picture that you're looking for. Um, and I, I recognize saying this out loud that that most people are probably like, well, I never ran into that. But it's it's like those little things that that uh, make photographers crazy that um, uh, iPhoto didn't do. And 
other programs did or did other things better, and iPhoto just didn't really seem to catch up. So, um, so yes, it got worse, and our expectations changed, um, especially when it comes to to uh, mobile devices. And I think that's that's really the thing that 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 you know caused the whole shift, which was, you know, if if you keep in mind, the iPhone is like the most popular camera in the world. Um, you know, I think that's still true. Um, you know, like, like people are taking so many photos with their smartphones. Well, iPhoto could kind of handle that. They, they, they did, um, uh, I, uh, iCloud, no, photo stream, my photo stream. Um, it, it, it's funny because the, all the names are like just different enough. It's like, it's my iCloud photo sharing stream library. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, like, like they, they did something so that you could, like the pictures you took on your iPhone would eventually make their way back to iPhoto. But it, it just, Apple rightly, I think, realized they needed something that would handle this new interconnected um, reality that, you know, we don't want to figure out where the photos are. I don't want to have to always import everything. I don't, have, I don't want to have to remember to connect my phone to my computer using a cable. And, you know, a couple of years ago, you'd be like, oh, well, of course, that's the only way you do it. But now, like, I never plug in my phone to my computer because everything happens over the cloud. And so photos is the answer to, all right, how do we just make it... How do we meet the expectation of people who just want their photos? They just want them somewhere. They don't want to have to, to you know, deal with it. And so photos for OS X and photos for iOS and iCloud Photo Library ties all that together. So that, I think, uh, really necessitated the approach to the book going back to your original question, which was really like, like, how do you write about this thing, which is actually three different things um, all working together? And how do you, uh, you know, take advantage of that in the best way? This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by lynda.com, the unparalleled online video training library. Get a full free 10 day trial at lynda.com slash Mac Voices. If you're a Mac Voices listener or viewer, it's a pretty safe bet that we share some characteristics. You like to learn, to keep up with what's new and interesting in the tech field and beyond. That you are tech savvy to one degree or another. That you want to be more productive and probably need to be more productive, either for yourself or for your vocation. We all have our secret weapons to keep us afloat and ahead of the competition. I'm happy to say that lynda.com is a key piece of my arsenal. No one can learn everything about everything, no matter how hard we try, because tomorrow, next week, or next month, there's even more of everything. If I can learn something from an expert, why would I want to waste precious time trying to figure it out for myself? Lynda.com has experts in a wide variety of subjects, tech and non-tech, who will help you learn what you need to learn fast and efficiently, and at your own pace. Say that you need to get up to speed on Google Apps for the office, or want to learn how to work with Camera Raw in Photoshop Creative Cloud or are interested in learning about entrepreneurship from someone like the one and only Guy Kawasaki. Those are just a few of the recent courses that lynda.com has published. And I mean just a few, because there are all sorts of videos to help you learn about the general concepts of a topic, or the down and dirty details. You can try all of this for a free full 10 days by signing up at lynda.com slash macvoices. During that 10 days, you can watch whatever you want, as much as you want, on any subject you want. No restrictions, no limitations. Try a design course, then a spreadsheet course, then a web publishing course. You pick the topics that suit you, not some limited subset of the collection of over 3,500 courses on lynda.com. Please, do something nice for yourself right now by signing up for 10 days free at lynda.com slash macvoices. Then let me know what you decided to watch. Maybe we can trade recommendations. I'm on Twitter as at Chuck Joyner, and I want to hear from you. One last time, lynda.com slash macvoices for a free 10-day trial. Do it now, you won't regret it. Thanks to lynda.com for their support of Mac Voices. 
I want to use the uh, your comment about the 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 photo library location as a starting point for photos. How does photos handle off site uh, off site? Um, off hard drive or external hard drives or external mm -hmm. device device libraries is it a bit more elegant or are we still jumping through the same old hoops that we had to fight before when we wanted to do something like that it's it, it's elegant and it's unobtrusive there's there's a little icon at in the lower uh i think left corner of of your thumbnail or uh, of the image that says um uh this is a referenced image and it's like a little you know arrow or something. Um, and when that's not available, there's just a little red line through it. So you know that you're not going to be able to work with the original file, but you can still see the image and you can still, you know, it's um, one of the interesting things that, that Photos does. Um, it, it seems to do a pretty good job of, of creating thumbnails and, um, you know, um, compressed versions of photos that are still workable, um, you know, meaning that if you have an offline image and you blow it up, it's not going to be this sort of Rorschach, um, you know, uh, spl splatter of, of, of pixels. You, you'll be able to know, oh, this is from the, the birthday or whatever. And you could take that and maybe put that into a new album so that when you then get home and you connect the drive, it's, it's there, it's ready for you, and then you can do some editing or whatever. So it's um, like it, it, it does the smart thing. It says, oh, sorry, this, this one's not available, but you can still do everything else except for edit it directly. Okay, but, but I guess this is where we may get into a, a bit of a, not a disagreement, but just I guess a different approach. Um, iPhoto, you, your, your library, your photos were on your Macintosh hard drive. Yes. And if you wanted to move them off to an external drive or to a, a Drobo or something like that, mm -hmm. You had you had a challenge on your hands. Mm -hmm. I know now that that, that that everything's supposed to live in the cloud, and that's supposed to be the way it is. But there's still those of us that, for various reasons, want to have copies on our on our machines. Maybe yeah. we don't want to turn on iCloud photo sharing mm -hmm. library mm -hmm. thing, whatever. <laughs> uh, so so. Do we still have the, I mean, obviously we have the option to keep it on our hard drives, but are we e now easily able to move it over to an external drive or to a Drobo or something like that without having the same hoops to jump through? Yeah, um, it's, um, yeah, I, I, I apologize. I, I went into the weeds on a detail. That's, that's okay. Okay. Um, uh, yes, it's, it, it is possible. Um, so, so here's how it's, here's the, the, the structure of it. Um, by default, anything that you import from a memory card goes into your, your, um, iPhoto library. Um, that can be on your, your computer's hard drive. That can be on an external hard drive. Um, you know, as long as it's, um, it's basically like 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 your library file contains everything. It, it contains all your images, all the the files and the metadata that that um, Photos uses to track all of that. Um, if if your your library is too big to store on, like say your laptop hard drive, you can store it on an external drive, and then when that drive is connected, you can open it on your Mac there. The thing that, that, that I was referring to was, um, let's say, like what I have. Um, on my uh, MacBook Pro hard drive, I have my, my library. Um, but anything that you import from disk, not, not from a memory card, anything you bring in from disk, you can choose to, to basically keep that in its original location. And that, that becomes a referenced file. So, um, so that way, I'm not filling up my hard drive um, with all of those originals. They are on, you know, the the Drobo or external drive or whatever. Um, when it comes to to the the cloud, um, that it, it it gets a little more complicated. And and this is you know um, exactly why to buy a book like mine <laughs> because. Um, uh, when you have that turned on, your originals get sent up to, to iCloud. Um, if you have enough storage space, uh, you can opt to also keep the originals on your computer. And so that way, um, you know, you have all of your originals somewhere. Um, 
you could figure iCloud as the place for all your originals, but I wouldn't advise it because then they're they're out of your control. Um, there's another option that says, and, and this, this happens if you don't have enough space on your hard drive, to optimize your library on your computer. Um, and that's, that's what I have. And so what, what my photos library on my laptop looks like is um, basically lower resolution, smaller versions of all my photos um, that I can still edit and such. Um, and then those, the, the changes that I make go up to iCloud. And then I also have on another computer at home, I, I have a, a little Mac mini that I use as, uh, as a server. Um, and that has a giant hard disk attached to it. And so that becomes my sort of source uh, of, of, of originals. So I have photos on that machine, also linking my, my account, the same library and everything. So all of the originals get stored there and the, the uh, optimized versions are on my uh, my laptop, um, and when you go to edit an optimized version, it just downloads that original um, from iCloud. You have to wait a few seconds for it to come down, and then you can edit it as normal. Okay. Did the I, I'm sorry. Did I answer answer the, the yeah. question or, or or make things more complicated? Because it's it's it it's one of those things where it can be really easy, and it can also get a little bit complicated depending on like your situation so today's edition of mac voices is sponsored by tunnel bear the really simple app to browse privately and get around blocked websites find out more and download your very own tunnel bear at tunnelbear.com slash mac voices we're living in a world where wi-fi is everywhere to keep us connected everywhere the only problem with that is that we're not always sure who we're connected to or who might be watching what we're looking at or talking about. I don't want to sound paranoid, but there are real dangers out there, especially when you're traveling or away from home and need to surf from the hotel room or the coffee shop or even the airport. That's where TunnelBear comes in. TunnelBear is an easy to use VPN or virtual private network that secures and encrypts your internet connection on your Mac, iPhone, or iPad so that ISPs, governments, and companies can't monitor what you're seeing, saying, or doing. You can appear to be surfing from a different country if you wish, so that censorship restrictions or blocked websites become accessible, or from your home country if that isn't your issue. Try the free tier of TunnelBear right now by visiting tunnelbear.com slash macvoices. While you're there, be sure to check out their plain English privacy policy. Not a lot of legalese that makes you wonder what they really mean. Unlike some services we could name, TunnelBear's privacy policy is as easy to understand as their service is to use. TunnelBear gives you all the privacy and security of a VPN without any of the setup and maintenance hassles. One-click security, and I do mean one-click security, is waiting for you now at tunnelbear.com slash macvoices. Go get it and surf securely. Thanks to TunnelBear for their support of Mac Voices. Well, I, I think anytime you start trying to have all these automatic things happening in the background, yeah. I think it, it, it unfortunately, it, w it would be real easy and, and a very simplistic way of looking at it to say, okay, my, my photo library is on my Mac or my photo library is on my Drobo or on this external hard drive or, you know, I've got the split up over a couple hard drives. Yeah. But when, yeah. You, when, you start, when you start doing that and then when you start throwing a cloud into the mix, and the syncing back and forth between devices, I mean, it just, it, it has to become just a little more complex. Yeah. The complexity is the price you pay for the convenience and the accessibility to all these photos. Yeah. I personally am not sure that I have to have access to all my photos on every device all the time. Mm -hmm. But that's me. And I know people that will argue diligently that they absolutely have to have, you know, access to 500,000 to 500, photos every, yeah. at any given moment. Right. Okay. You, know, you never know. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. You know, I, that, that that picture of me catching a fish when I was three years old—it's just not that important. Um, 
Jeff, though, the other thing I want to make sure we do touch on, because yeah. the other aspect of this, you know, now we talked about iPhoto quite a bit. Now let's flip to the Aperture users. The yes. Aperture users are are grousing a bit over the fact that there's a lot of control that's been lost or allegedly lost. And yet mm -hmm. I, I, I keep hearing things about that the, the controls and, and the photo enhancement tools in photos, they're, they, they appear simplistic, but they're really very deep. Mm -hmm. Is that is that fair? And and how do it you is, feel about that? Yeah, yeah, it, it is fair. I think um, actually, I was talking to somebody earlier today about this, um, and uh, he he you know it has a big aperture library, and um, he surprised me because uh, you know those of us around the table were sort of going, oh, well, you know, it doesn't do this, doesn't that, um, and he said he said actually you know um, photos does a pretty good job if. If they just beefed it up with a lot of the sort of uh, you know metadata uh, support that Aperture boasts, you know uh, more uh, more robust keywording and um, being able to add IPTC metadata, so you know things that 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 tag your information on each photo in case you you know publish it on online or whatever, um, things like that. Uh, you know, if if they beefed that up, then it would be a, a pretty decent contender. Um, you know. Th those types of features, it's 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 very clear, at least initially, and and I think it's probably going to be this case uh, going forward. Um, you know, Apple had basically ceded the fact that you know Lightroom was the more popular uh, program, and um, you know. Apple's audience for photos are people who, this actually goes back to our storage uh, d discussion, you know, it's probably somebody who has an iMac, probably has a 500 gig, one terabyte hard drive, and they never, practically never have to worry about all of this. Um, you know, they, they don't need to worry about, uh, you know, uh, th they will never tag their photos. Um, I make some very good you know, uh, arguments why you would want to do that and why you want to, you know, be able to find things later, et cetera. Um, you know, but there's some people like they don't care. They're happy to just scroll through and, and, and use Apple's method of, um, breaking things out into moments and collections and years, sort of, you know, zooming, zooming in and digging into your album, uh, into your, your library. Um, you know, so, so those types of things, um, you know, we, we might see a return to um, uh, like star ratings, for example. Um, w one of the big annoyances I have with photos is that it doesn't do star ratings. Uh, you either mark something as a favorite or or it's not a favorite. Um, you know, I like I I like having more granularity there, so I can say, you know, uh, the photos I marked as two stars are things that I think have promise, but I want to work on later, for example. Like, there's none of that. Um, there, there could be easily, and and actually, there's a way to kind of approximate that using keywords that I describe in the book. Um, so, you know, on on that sort of organizational side, um, there are ways to to approximate some of what Aperture could do, but a lot of it kind of falls down, and that's really why, you know. I think people who who are invested in Aperture really need to look into you know Lightroom or Capture One or you know something else. Um, but in terms of the the editing tools, um, I was especially when I was I was digging in for the book, um, I was very surprised at a, that that Photos does a lot more than I thought it could. Um, both in terms of you know there are. When you go into the the uh, adjustments pane, for example, you have you know um, exposure and color saturation, and you know some some of those uh, kind of baseline things that you want to change in photos. Um, but you also have other things like uh, noise reduction and um, uh, a way to create vignettes and um, uh, white balance and temperature, color temperature, things like that. That um, like you don't actually see, you have to add them uh, from a little tiny ad menu, but those capabilities are there. And also, what's I, I think more interesting and impressed me the most is um, there's a a sort of simple editing way where you have you have light color and black and white, and so. If you say, you know, like like th this photo that I shot, it's underexposed. I it just needs to be brighter. 
And um, you can just drag a little line that that's, you know, points to the, the lighter version of it. Um, and it makes it look better. Yay! If you if you expand that out, you, there's a way you can see like all the different sliders that that dictate that. As you do that, Photos is being really smart about how it's making it lighter. It's not just cranking the exposure up, which sometimes would you know end up with like a, a blown out white background or something. Um, more often than not, I would increase the light slider. And I would see the exposure go down because what it's doing is it's evaluating the scene. And so like the exposure may be reduced, but the shadows would be, in, would be lightened. Uh, you know, the, the contrast would get, you know, nudged a little bit. So the, the algorithms that they have to examine the scene and make uh, adjustments on the fly are actually very sophisticated and, um, you know, really do that job of, um, that that task that programs should have, which is okay, this computer is smarter. Or this software is smarter than you when it comes to, um, you know, making photo adjustments. You know, you've got uh, PhDs and computer scientists who who you know spend all their time thinking about this to make your photo better. So drag this, and it will make your photo better. And for the people who really want to, you know, dig in on those specific things, those options are there too. They're just a little hidden at first. So um, you're not going to, you know, replicate Photoshop. Um, you're not going to do things like, um, like in, in Lightroom, for example, you can, uh, like, let's say we have uh, a landscape and you want to make the sky a little bit darker uh, because you had to you had to bring up your your exposure so you could see the foreground better and the light get the sky gets blown out. There's a tool that a, a gradient filter that lets you make the sky a little bit darker, so you're only applying it to half the image. Excuse me while I knock my lights over. Um, like that sort of thing is not there. You don't have control over specific areas of of your image. Uh, the way you would in Photoshop or Lightroom or something like that. But that goes back to the fact that the people who do need to do that would probably turn to one of those other, other programs. Now, in, in this version, it's a little bit crippled because you can't easily turn to one of those programs. In iPhoto, you could say, oh, well, edit this in Photoshop and then bring it back. Um, when uh, OS X El Capitan ships in the fall, that version of Photos will be able to handle um, uh, editing extensions. So you could say, you know, I want to just use the, you know, <laughs> vignette tool from Lightroom or, well, I doubt Adobe will, <laughs> will provide yeah. that. But, you know, yeah. other, other, you know, Acorn or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Pixelmator, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, like that capability will be there. So it's actually, it was surprisingly um, uh, sophisticated to me. And just from a, a book production aspect, um, I, I'm not afraid to admit I was a little frustrated because I had my outline and I was like, okay, this, I'm going to do this, 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 and this in my chapter about editing images. And the chapter kept getting longer and longer because <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, it does this. You know, like I, uh, for example, you can copy and paste adjustments between photos. If you, if you have one photo um, of, of a scene and you get it to look just right, and you have four others that were shot at the same time, maybe, you know, a, a few seconds later or a couple minutes later, you can just copy the adjustments, all the work you did on the first one, and just paste it to the others. And all those things, it, it just automatically gets done. You don't have to, you know, do the same edits on every single image. For some reason, I'd completely missed that, and I stumbled upon it, and I was like, oh, this is amazing. So, you know, like, there's a lot of stuff there that is not initially uh, obvious, which is kind of exciting. It, it, it's very exciting, and it's because Photos out of the gate has gotten a bad rap. My version has, mm -hmm. my, my, my version, or my take on it, I should say, has been, look, it's, it's, it's another one of these from the ground up rewrites. Yes. Um, you know, give it time. Yes, I know that your favorite features are not there. And, and I feel like people have overlooked a lot of things. That's why I've, I was kind of anxious to have you on and kind of reiterate this and, and have you talk about how you covered it in the book, that you really need to go and, and, and study a photos a little more. It's great if you just want four sliders and you'd like your picture to look better. But mm -hmm. if you have the skills and the knowledge, 
you can dig a lot deeper. And no, it's not going to be quite to the depth of aperture yet. And it's mm -hmm. definitely going to be better than iPhoto was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are people I think they're going to move up, up, up a notch. There are people that may have stepped back a little bit or just wait for the next version because aperture still runs on right on on yosemite with no problem i don't know about El capitan um but but you know it's it's one more time that people are expecting these things to pop out fully formed yeah. with all the problems solved and it just doesn't work that way i mean i, I was i was listening to, to another show um i guess this week they were talking about how everybody thinks you know apple being as large as they are they have these just incredible unlimited resources the problem is that the resources are limited because there are only so many great software engineers out there yeah. and and apple can try to gather up as many as possible but even then only so many great software engineers can work on one program or you end up with something designed by committee and we all know how that goes right right well and you know there's a um i think it has a name but you know there's there's an aspect of of, of programming and other things where you know if you just throw more people at it it doesn't it doesn't solve the problem and in fact it sometimes makes problems worse so it's not like apple can just say oh well you know if we had a hundred more engineers to photos it'll be perfect like no it 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 doesn't work that way yeah. you know Maybe a yeah. hundred more testers, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you yeah. know th those those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Well, listen. I know you got to go, so I want to make sure we get some of the details in about the book, um, yes. how much it is, um, where you can go get it, and and also to wrap up any particular thing you want to say about the iOS versions that you haven't already said. Um. Let's see. Um, how much it is? I I am embarrassed to say I. I did not check that because okay. forgot. Okay. Um, we'll oh, have wait. a link in the show notes. Wait. People can go and, and I have grab this it. thing called the internet. Um, wow. Uh, I know. Currently, uh, it, it's it's twenty nine ninety nine. Amazon is showing it as uh, nineteen oh five. Um, uh, so so it's it's a hardback, hard, soft cover, soft cover. It's it's printed. It's made of paper. I know it's a strange idea. It's what made of concept. paper. I know. Yeah. Uh, uh, full color, lots of beautiful photos, lots of examples, etc. Um, uh, as we are speaking right now, it is um, uh, it's been printed, and I think it's it's basically um, being delivered. So, you know, um, at some point before the end of July, um, the you should see it on on bookshelves and available from Amazon and all that stuff. Um, once it once it leaves me, um, I know that that it was printed uh, a few days after I you know turned in all the final files, but I don't know the distribution timing. But it's it's usually it's usually within a couple of weeks of it being printed. Um, and uh, I will have uh, more information about it at my site jeffcarlson.com. Um, in fact, uh, I I wrote. A, uh, an article for the Seattle Times. I have a, a column there um, that just talks about, uh, you know, okay, so what if you don't want to uh, move up to photos and you want to stick with iPhoto or Aperture? Uh, you know, like here are some things to do because, you know, the programs still work. And I completely respect anybody who says, you know what, I'm just not ready for this yet or I want it to mature a little bit or, you know, like, like I know iPhoto, I don't want to have to relearn anything. Uh, you know, like that's totally fine, um, and and so my my column that that you can find on my website uh, linked is um, you know details like some of the things to 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 watch out for and and prepare for, um, and then buy my book, and then you'll be ready to use photos. <laughs> that's perfect. That's perfect. Jeff, thanks for the time. I'm I'm glad we you know we we got in like you said into the weeds a little bit on certain things, but yeah, I, I think that I think the weeds are important. You need to you know, you need to understand what it is and what's there, and the fact that you can't just endorse or dismiss certain things without doing a bit more research. Mm -hmm. And and you've done the research for us, so now we all we have to do is go buy the book and read the research and gain the knowledge for ourselves. Yeah, absolutely, and you know it, it's. It's it's photo, so it's it's not like you know a, a spreadsheet that only a few people will use. Like we're all using photos, and so you know, like it's it, it's great to get into those sorts of details because we're you know we're all doing it. We're all we're all in this together. Thanks, Apple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, I, I think you know that's a, that's a great closing point. Um, this is something that that just about everybody is going to use one way or another, because even if you don't have an iPhone, you probably have a camera of some kind. That mm -hmm. and and now you're not going to have a film camera, so it's going to be digital. Mm -hmm. So photos is probably the first place you should look if you're looking for enhancement and management things. And then if you are really into it, you're going to know where else to go. Yeah, so exactly. Jeff, we'll have you back again soon. And, and of course, anytime you have a new project, we always love talking to you. Absolutely. I love coming on. All right. Good to see you. Good to see you. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Go check out Jeff's book, uh, Get More Out of Photos. Uh, give, it a, give it a fair shot, and I think you're going to be impressed. I know the little bit that I've played with it so far, I've been very impressed uh, with, with the results I've gotten because it's they're giving me results that I was never willing to take the time in Aperture or iPhoto to learn how to get. So that's as, about as high a recommendation as I can give it. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and the Mac Voices blog. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date on all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Do more with your Apple tech by subscribing to the free Mac Voices magazine on Flipboard by visiting macvoices.com slash magazine. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.